My friend Doug Folks was an avid supporter of Keensburg and its history until he passed away just recently. Doug was born in the 1920s and shared with me recently some of his memories, which will be shared with you in this episode of the story of Kingsburg, which is dedicated to Dougie. Well, this is Kingsburg, New Jersey in the year 2017. And like a lot of towns in the Jersey Bayshore area, it has changed dramatically during the last hundred years. In our last episode, we traveled back in time and drove down Beachway in Kingsburg, New Jersey to look for places we could stay to be near the boardwalk when hotels and a boardwalk actually existed in this town. But those days are long gone. We did not, however, take a ride down Carr Avenue, which we're going to do in this episode, starting at Church Street in the southern end of town. Now, Carr Avenue, generally the longest and straightest road in town, went directly north toward the boardwalk and the beaches. If you stepped off the train on Church Street, you might have taken a trolley from one end of Carr to the other, and along the way, you'd see hotels, arcades, restaurants, churches, and homes, all guaranteed to whet your appetite for fun in the sun on Raritan Bay. But our story starts in 1924 when less than 2,000 people lived in Kingsburg. The map shows the few roads that existed then, not many. And here's Carr Avenue, highlighted from Church Street, where the train station was located, and Beachway to the north, where the hotels, boardwalk, and amusements were located. So Carr Avenue was the expressway, so to speak, to all the fun. And then fast forward to 1962, long after Route 36 had been built in 1927, when now the roadways of Kingsburg were spreading out to occupy the land surrounding the center of town. And here are the maps side by side. And look at how much has changed in the road system. Now, before the turn of the century, when Kingsburg was simply called Tanner's Landing and then later Granville, it resembled and actually was a farm town with dirt roads and a few homes and lots of farms. And here's a very early picture of Carr Avenue before trolley tracks were installed. This picture includes a row of trees, looks like street lights, a sidewalk with a house or two. Most people today would be hard pressed to identify the location of this shot. And look at this picture from approximately the same angle. Or look at this one with trees lining either side of Carr Avenue. In those days, trees were one way to identify property lines. Here's a similar shot of Carr Avenue taken from the same location, but this time a couple of bicyclists are in the shot. So let's start traveling up Carr Avenue and begin with a shot of a trolley headed north on Carr Avenue while the photographer is standing on Church Street. And we're going to alternate between historic photographs and some high-definition video from today to compare the past with the present. And immediately after the turn is the old Kingsburg National Bank building, which is now Kingsburg Borough Hall. Uh, we're 100 years old this year, uh, we st we're, but we're older than that. We were a point comfort prior to getting our first uh, established post office with the help of go uh, then Governor Kane and uh, Mayor Ramsey. So when Keensburg got established, it then became a tourist destination for people from the city, people from uh, North Jersey to come and enjoy the beach and to enjoy what, uh, what the Gale Houses establishes as the Keensburg Boardwalk, which was wooden planks at the time until the destruction by Hurricane uh, Donna in the 1960s, but then that was rebuilt, and um, you know it's no longer what we, what you would be considered a boardwalk, but amusement park. But we still call it the boardwalk, um, and that's been an establishment in our, our community well before we were even Keensburg. Uh, we have St. Anne Church, which also turned 100 years old last year. Uh, we have other community churches that are well established, uh, Keensburg. You know, first uh, the Lenape Indians were the, the home of, it was the home of Keensburg, which then became a shore community. Shore, uh, we had the uh, steamboats coming in, the, the, the Keensburg and the other steamboats coming in to our pier. And uh, then it be, in the late 1950s, uh, it became more of a residential where bungalows were converted into homes by putting heating systems into it and it became more of a year-round location for the families that were commuting here. 
So it is still a short destination, as though it doesn't get as much uh, popularity as uh, Seabright and Sandy Hook and Belmar and Seaside. But we are a sure community, even though it's the Raritan Bay, we are a sure community with a nice, clean, free beach. Say hello to Mayor Watson and the town council members during 1930. I imagine the photographer just said to these guys, pretend like you're all doing something important. And at the other end of Carr Avenue was one of the other business leaders of Kingsburg, William A. Gellhouse, who owned a lot of property throughout the Jersey Bay Shore. His goal was to make Kingsburg bigger and better. And his two sons, Henry and Kenneth, were at his side making plans and selling real estate through the New Point Comfort Beach Company. Meanwhile, Lillian Gellhouse was the editor of the Kingsburg News. Doug Folks remembers her well. I, uh, I worked for Lillian Gilhouse, was the daughter of Mr. Gilhouse. She took over all, all of the custard stands, frozen custard, malted milk stands, and uh, I ended up with the malted milk stand. And uh, she was a good person, and uh, she gave us the big steering wheel through me and it, for our museum that was always on the porch of their home on, down at uh, Shore Boulevard. And you may have seen this before, but to our left is what's left of an old gas station, which is one of my favorites. And here's what it looked like. And you see that building in the background with two chimneys? That was Kingsburg's first grammar school on Church Street and Myrtle. And then later, it housed the local government when a newer school was built. And then here's another gas station at this intersection, which is no longer here. And Schmidt's Meat was also located on Carr Avenue. And here's an old store I'm told was on Carr Avenue, but look at the old fire hydrant. And it's hard to know exactly where some of these old businesses were located, but nevertheless, here they are. Here's the delivery truck for Prime Meats. And this looks like the market where Prime Meats was located along with a different truck for perhaps a different time. And here's John's Bargain Store and Adam's Hats. And here's New Jersey Motors. And this end of car, the southern end, was lined with really nice homes like these from 1930, which has been provided by Dorn's Classic Images. Take a look. Remember, the plan was to get people to look at a film like this, to see how wonderful Kingsburg was to visit, and then convince people to buy property and build homes or bungalows. And check out the automobiles. There were actually a couple of car dealerships in town, and we're gonna take a look at one of them a bit later. Today, you can find some great bargains on homes in Kingsburg, and many of them are being restored, and folks are taking great care to make them look really, really nice. So again, we're still headed north toward the bay and the boardwalk. Here's the American Legion Post 274. And just up the road is a memorial park, which we're gonna be visiting to honor those who served and died fighting for our country. And here's where the new modern police station is being built and it should be done about 2018. So, on we go. And let's stop right here because that church over there on the left is St. Anne's, and it too recently celebrated its 100th anniversary. A beautiful church and really nice facilities. Here's a house across the street.
And here is St. Anne's in 1930. And just like a lot of people in these days, everybody got dressed up for church. Now let's take a moment to see if we recognize anybody. People sure did get excited when they, they saw a camera pointed in their direction. And of course, here's a black and white postcard of St. Anne's. And another postcard. And here we are back in the present. Here's the back of the church. And across the street is the new Joseph Caruso School, which just recently opened. And here's the side of the church on Francis Place. So let's keep driving and we'll cross Francis Place with the church on our left. And here's the rectory today and an older photograph. And of course, here's the postcard with the rectory <laughs> in the upper left hand corner and the convent in the upper right. And here's another postcard of the school where I actually taught for a few years with the convent on the right. Today, the school and the property are for sale. So with the school on our left, let's keep moving down Carr Avenue. Here's a quick look at the convent today with the school right next to it. And this place is at the corner of Terrace and Carr. And here's St. Mark's Church at the corner of Carr Avenue and Kennedy Way. And coming up is Maple Avenue. And here is St. Anne's Thrift Shop on the corner. And on we go, now approaching the Keensburg Emergency Medical Service and New Point Comfort Volunteer Fire Department. Here's an older photograph of a parade in front of the same building. And coming up on our left is Victory Park, as promised, where a monument honors those from Keensburg who both served or died in service during World War II. And here's Garfield Avenue. And right here is where the Kingsburg Police Department was located before Hurricane Sandy. Again, from the old police department, there's the firehouse over there. And directly across the street is the Kingsburg Pentecostal Church. So on we go. Here comes Sealy Avenue. And right afterward is West and East Shore Street. We're on the corner is an older building, which is now a laundromat. And look, here's a photo of what it did look like. It was the uh, Porter Building. And here, of course, is the required postcard, believe it or not. And here's today, once again, 121 Carr Avenue. So here we go. Again, we're going toward Oak Street. And today, whatever was here on the corner has been replaced by a convenience store. And right here in this area at 111 through 117 Carr Avenue was Baalbach's Bar and Auditorium. Now, I don't have a photograph of outside, but again, thank goodness for postcards, here's a look inside. Now we're crossing Oak Street with John Street coming up on the left. It was a campground with a big pavilion and lots of activities which promoted good health. So let's take a look, check it out, and listen to what Doug Folks has to say about it. Everyone thinks that the boardwalk was the first thing that existed down here. But the first thing really was the um, Camp John. It was a German athletic club out of Newark. And uh, they had a title of uh, some sort of German name and they were very active in activities. And they owned all of that property on Carr Avenue. Hmm. 
where the Dublin, the Dublin house is now, and down to uh, almost where Wallbacks was. So, uh, and there was a lake in there. All in, it was on the board. Hmm. And my father, I skated there, and you know, I, I knew there was a lake there. And any of the history of Camp John, it indicates the lake was there. And tent, all they had was tent platforms for their tents. And they would uh, either own them or rent them, or they belonged to the association. And that's it. Later on, they built a big pavilion. Now, this is all before the boardwalk. And uh, eventually, the boardwalk moved in, and uh, that was the big attraction. And Camp John kind of faded out during the war, probably nationality, Germans, you know, the, who, who knows? I, I don't know what happened. But by then, they had built several bungalows in Camp John, and they were they had a baby parade every year. They, they always had things going. And Doug said there was a lake or a pond that has since been filled in. It was at the end of uh, Ramsey, and uh, it went all the way up to Sealy. And here's an aerial shot of where we think it might have been located. And so the only thing left today is a street sign, which is obviously named after Camp John. So now we're getting closer to where all the action was, closer to the beach and the boardwalk, the uh, game rooms, the souvenir stands, and places to eat, such as Pete and Mary's. So let's stop in and see what was cooking in 1930. Well, whatever we just had, I'm sure it was delicious. So let's move on towards Center Avenue on the left. And on the right, where Center enters car, is Grandview Apartments, which is named after Grandview Avenue, which came from Beachway, but simply no longer exists. And somewhere on Car Avenue was Walter Klepp Ford, where you could buy a car, get your car fixed, or get some gasoline. And here comes one of the brand new 1930 Fords down Car Avenue right now. Hey, who's that kid in the jump seat? Oh, and see that gas pump? Let's stop it right here. They were usually right along the side of the road so people could just pull over and get some gasoline to, to fill up their car. This almost looks like a television advertisement for Ford automobiles, don't it? And here's Genevieve Klepp. Uh, I'm not sure if it's his wife or his daughter, but she runs the parts department. And I hear tell the gentlemen would buy parts for their cars, even if they didn't need them. Hmm, I wonder why. And here are the guys in the garage who fix those newfangled cars. Not sure who this is, but it may very well be Walter Klepp and his grandchildren, and it looks like he's teaching them some bad habits. And here we are, back on car, with Center Avenue over there. And here's a sign, literally, of the changing times. So let's get back on Car Avenue and keep moving north. And here's a present-day pub, and here it is again with 58 Car right next to it. And across the street, the Keensburg Museum of History, which has made this program possible, I hope you'll stop in to see it. And while many of the buildings have been vacant, local artists are beginning to leave their artistic marks on many of them, like this building, 53 Carr Avenue, which used to be the Dublin House and a favorite hangout of Doug Folks when he was a young man. Down on Carr Avenue, uh, Jerry Sheen and Benny Andridge, uh, built a, a, a row of stores, and one was the Dublin House, and it was a little uh, a tavern. The tavern that had a band in it, and uh, that was our hangout. But until 8 o'clock or so, we'd be in the candy store having coffee, and then we went into the 
into the Dublin house uh, for our beer room, you know. As a matter of fact, uh, when I was in radio school, the Dublin house was still, it was going when I, uh, I come home on weekends. And uh, that's where you met everybody. That, that was our hangout. And we had a lot of fun then. And this is 53 Car Avenue. And according to historical records, it was the site of the Hubert Market. Here's what it looked like inside. Now take note, they had fresh fish and clams. Again, here's the outside of the building today, but vacant like many others. And around the corner, more artwork on the outside. And across Highland Avenue, which enters Carr Avenue, right here is Kaiser Ray's on the corner, which is owned and operated by Cliff Moore. And here's an old picture of Carr Avenue looking toward the waterfront. And down there on the left in this photo, it looks like the building where Kaiser Ray's is located. And see the meat market across the street, which we looked at earlier? See the top of the building, it's the same shape. And here's a view today. And here's a building recently torn down right across the street. It's happening more and more as new investors are either renovating where they can renovate or just simply tearing down and building new. We're still moving north. Here's Seabreeze Avenue on the left. Not sure what occupied this space, but one thing's for sure, Wallach's was right here. couple of buildings on this side, and on the other side, it's Nappies. More artwork on another building. Looks good, doesn't it? And here's the other side on the same corner. So let's stop here, because this is where the action was, and we're facing the boardwalk, beach, and bay. And here's one of the historic photographs with the same view as today, sort of. And something to note, it's a dirt road with trolley tracks right down the middle. And these trolley tracks came generally from the train station and led folks to this area. And here's another shot from about the same period. And here's basically the same shot some years later, 1940 about. And it looks like the road is paved and the trolley tracks are gone. And here's approximately the same view today. And here we go again, headed toward Beachway with Bay Avenue on our left. And for what it's worth, here's 16 Carr Avenue. Anybody know what was there? And this is looking south on Carr today, obviously. And here's a photograph looking this way in the 1930s. And then the opposite way. See if you can see some of the same buildings. Yeah, now you see this building? Now let's look at another photo of the same scene from the opposite angle. See the building? And, and often I'll do that when I'm looking at a lot of photographs to determine a little bit more information about what the photograph is and where it was taken. And here's Beachway, and as I've said many times, on the other side would have been the boardwalk to Beach in the Bay. And here's a shot today looking down Beachway toward the west. And now let's pan left to look down Carr Avenue. And then east on Beachway. And Reuben's Drugstore would have been behind us on the corner of Carr and Beachway. And Dr. Reuben really he named the drugstore Roxy's, and it was not just a drugstore. Here's what it looked like in 1930. In those days, you could sit in the drugstore in the so-called soda fountain and get something to eat, something to drink. They, they had the complete line of bathing supplies, such as lotions and bathing caps, and you name it. And they bragged in their advertising that they carried more than 10,000 items. They had jewelry, hats, and of course, postcards for a penny. And look at those souvenir conch shells fresh from Raritan Bay, not. <laughs> Okay, uh, should I turn this way for the camera? Sure. <laughs> so he does. Here's the end of Carr Avenue and the end of our program, really. Oh, well, it's almost the end. And the other side of Roxy's Drugstore was the boardwalk. 
This was the people mover of the day, and it was quite frankly the main attraction. This was the place to be. Kingsburg was the place to be. It was the beginning, unfortunately, in many ways, of the end. But it would take decades and a world war before the character, and in some cases, the personality of Kingsburg would change into what it has become today. And look at these faces from 1930. Many of these folks are sadly gone, but generations of their families probably have lots of stories to tell about them and how they lived, and unfortunately, how many may have died. But for now, here they are, alive again, full of enthusiasm and excited about their futures. This was a time many of them would have remembered for a long time to come, and I hope that many of us will now remember them.